In episode 6 of this series, we learned how to move a marker by a given displacement in the x and y directions. In physics, the amount and direction of this displacement is determined by an object's velocity. Velocity is the amount of distance that an object travels during a journey divided by the amount of time it takes for the object to make that journey. Velocity has units of meters per second, which indicates the amount of distance the object covers during a given amount of time. You can rearrange the velocity equation to see that the displacement of an object's motion is its velocity times the amount of time. So, if your velocity is 2 meters per second, then every one second you're traveling 2 meters. Or every half a second you're traveling 1 meter. Or every quarter of a second you're traveling half a meter. By thinking about how far we travel over a small time interval, we can use the concept of velocity to animate an object with our computer code. Animations are created by showing very brief images that are only slightly different from each other. We call each of these images a frame, and the time that each frame lasts is called the time step. This concept is useful in physics because if we know an object's velocity in a given frame and the time step, we can calculate how far the object moves in that frame as the velocity multiplied by the time step. We then repeat this calculation for the next frame, and the next frame, and the next frame until we're finished with our animation. We can tell our computer code to repeat this process by using a structure called a loop. Here we have a modified version of our code from episode 6. We again have Nestor starting out at the origin, and we'll use the move function to move him by an amount dx and dy in the horizontal and vertical directions. But this time, we're calculating dx and dy using Nestor's velocity. This process of calculating dx and dy and then moving Nestor will repeat because we've placed them inside something called a while loop. The word while here tells the computer to repeat everything underneath it until we reach the stopping condition. In this case, the stopping condition triggers when our value of time reaches the stopping time that we specify. Here is where we set Nestor's velocity. Notice that we're giving Nestor two values for velocity, one for the x-direction and one for the y-direction, since velocity is a vector. When we run the code, we see Nestor creep to the right at the speed specified by his velocity vector. If you look carefully, you can see that his motion is actually created by repeated jumps across the screen. Each of these jumps is one frame in the animation, or one pass around the loop. If we increase the x component of Nestor's velocity, he will move across the screen faster. And, if we give Nestor's velocity a y component, he'll start to move upward and to the right. You can use this code to animate as many markers as you like. Let's add a blue dot named Will and give him a velocity that is slightly faster than Nestor's. We also need to add commands to move Will inside the loop at the same time as Nestor. Running the code, we can see Will get ahead of Nestor. You have now learned how to animate objects with constant velocity. The activities in the description below will help you learn more about this process and show you more that you can do with these animations.